could boil the kettle and make some bis turkey one if sad and substandard gravy is your thing. I like this. Hey there folks, how's it going? You can get away with a lot in the kitchen if you can make a good sauce and the cornerstone of that is roux. This simple mixture of fat and flour is basically a kitchen superpower. Knowing how and when to use it is probably the fastest way to level up your cooking game. So today, let's get you sorted on that score with my top tips for five levels of roux that you'll use all the time. Let's go. Your basic roux starts out with fat. In this case, butter, but we'll try different things in a bit. Now the rules are the same for pretty much any roux. We need a one-to-one -one ratio of fat to flour here. And my usual rule of thumb is one gram of fat and flour to 10 mils of liquid. So for 500 mils of liquid, that means we'll need 50 grams each of butter and flour. It's nice and simple. Once you've done this for a few times, you'll get pretty good at eyeballing it, but for now, let's measure it out. I'm using unsalted butter here, but really whatever you have is fine. You'll be seasoning to taste anyway, right? 50 grams of that go into a pan over a lowish heat to melt while I weigh out roughly the same amount of flour. So 50 grams there or thereabouts. That looks good. The butter has melted, so into the pan it goes. And then I'll take a wooden spoon to it. You can whisk it if you prefer, whichever works for you. I tend to save the whisk for when a roux really misbehaves, but whatever you want to do, that's fine by me. We'll get started with a nice and easy blonde roux, perfect for a bechamel, the classic white mother sauce that forms the basis of so many other amazing sauces. Lasagna, fish, parsley, this is the starting point for all of them. Now the trick here is lowish heat and constant stirring. Don't let it catch or it is likely to burn. For a blonde roux, we don't want it to cook or colour much at all. We're really just cooking it for long enough to get rid of that raw flour flavour. So just cook it gently, stirring all the time for two or three minutes. You'll smell the difference when the flour is cooked out, but it shouldn't be smelling too malty. If it does, you've taken it too far. You can use it for something else. This looks and smells great, so it's time to add some milk. There's a few schools of thought on this. A lot of people on the internet will tell you to add the liquid gradually, stirring all the time, and that's not bad advice generally. It makes it easier to guarantee a smooth sauce, regardless of the temperatures of the roux and the liquid, and you can see things coming together. On the other hand, it's slow, it can be messy, and it's a bit more work. So when you're adding a cold liquid to a hot roux, the classic way to go is to just dump it in and stir like crazy while it reheats. This works, but if you're not used to it, it can be mildly worrying to begin with when it doesn't look like things are mixing. They will eventually, and you can always take a whisk to it if you end up with any stubborn lumps. So with that said, I'll take this off the heat and then in goes that milk. It's 500 milliliters as mentioned, which is a bit under a pint, I think, in the UK. And then back onto a medium heat to heat through and thicken, stirring all the time to prevent it catching and burning as milk is prone to do, even without the added flour. Now this shouldn't take too long, a few minutes, and you notice that after a couple of minutes it starts to thicken. Turn down the heat to medium low at that point, just keep stirring until your desired consistency is reached. Level one. Beautiful, thick, kind of flavourless. It's a great base, you can do all sorts of things with this, but I'm going to take it to level two, and we're going to make it into a morning. Perfect with cauliflower, a great base for mac cheese. This is a Swiss army knife of a roux based sauce that every cook should have in their pocket. If you're starting this from scratch, you just follow the process that we've followed so far and then grab a teaspoon of mustard. I like English. Dijon might work in a pinch or even that squeezy stuff, although I guess that might be too bitter. Simply stir that into the sauce and then follow up with a cheese of your choosing. I like to use a mixture of mature cheddar and vintage red Leicester for the colour as well as the flavour, but any flavourful melting cheese works great here. If you're feeling particularly saucy, try a bit of good quality blue Stilton. Not too much, it'll give the sauce a weird blue-green quality to it, but the flavour will be immense. It's great served alongside a steak or for a special occasion cauliflower cheese. I don't have any blue Stilton today, so I'll just follow my cheddar and my red Leicester with a little Parmesan, more for seasoning than anything, but it adds a little added cheesy punch. Then just stir everything together and keep going until the cheese is melted and you have a nice smooth sauce. Depending on how much cheese you added, you might need to pop this back over a low heat as you stir, just to keep it warm enough to melt that cheese. Clean spoon, don't at me. Perfect for your mac cheese, your cauliflower cheese. Learn to do it. So there we go folks, that's the basic sort with your levels one and your level two. Let's turn our attention to gravies. 
Although not strictly traditional, I like to base my gravies on a velouté, another of the five modern sauces, and another occasion for a roux, but this time with a twist. A bit of lard, and it's much the same deal. Half fat, half flour, make the roux as normal, and then some stock, a little bit of wine, some herbs, whatever you fancy. Don't forget your roasting juices. The same rules do apply, equal amounts of fat and flour. We'll be cooking the roux for a bit longer this time, which will reduce its thickening power a bit, but it will bring us some amazing flavor, especially combined with that lard that we're using here instead of butter. I'm still using 500 mils of liquid, so I'm gonna up the quantity of roux a little bit to account for that reduced thickening power. 75 grams each of lard and flour should do it. As before, I'll start by measuring out and melting the fat. And once it's melted, I'll add in the flour. Stir constantly and keep going for maybe five minutes. It won't brown as easily as a butter roux would because there are no milk solids and there's less sugar. And we're after a sort of a very light brown. More cooked than the previous, than the butter roux for the white sauces because we want this to impart some flavour as well. So we're looking for a sort of a hazelnut colour. It's what's known as a roux noisette. So what I'll do, rather than stirring constantly, every once in a while, I'll just let it sit for a little while, just to start to really sort of cook that flour and really start to develop that colour. It's going to be epic. But after a few minutes, it should start to smell a little malty. That's your cue to add stock. I'm just using this canned stock today, hashtag not an ad. If you've got homemade lying around, be sure to use that or use whatever reasonably good quality stock that you've got. And since this is cold, I'll follow the same tactic as before and just add it in off the heat and then back onto the heat and stir, stir, stir until all the lumps are gone. Be sure to get into the corners of your pan to grab any bits of roux that hide there because they will burn if you let them get away with it. Again, it'll thicken as it heats. This is a little too thick, but that's fine because I'm gonna add some of this red wine. No need to break the bank. You want something drinkable, but it doesn't have to be incredible. We just want some fruity acidity in our sauce, that's all. Keep stirring that and let it cook a little and then remove from the heat and keep it to one side until your meat is done. And then don't forget to add those roasting juices to finish off an absolutely amazing gravy. That's delicious. That lard roux really makes a difference. Slightly too thick so that it will let down a little bit when I add those roasting juices. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. And then once it's done, you just adjust your seasoning. You could boil the kettle and make some bistro if you want, if sad and substandard gravy is your thing, then you know, go for it. For level four, there are certain dishes that call out for some all out flavor and rely less on the thickening power of a roux. Think Creole cuisine, gumbos and the like, but this technique's great for any kind of stew, especially ones that are cooked low and slow. For this, we need a dark roux, sometimes called a chocolate roux, and we'll finally see where the name roux comes from, since what we make here will end up having a reddish brown, almost brick-like color to it. We're gonna need to cook this for about an hour, and its thickening power will be much less than with our blonde roux. So we'll start with 100 grams each of fat and flour. Now for this kind of roux, I'm using oil. Any fairly neutral oil will do. And of course you could use lard or butter, but saturated fats are more likely to turn on you and burn with the cooking that we're doing here. Even with the liquid fat, the same rules apply. Equal weights of fat and flour. Obviously the fat doesn't need to melt, so I'll just let it gently heat up before stirring the flour, and then I'll turn the heat right down and let this cook. Now at this point, it's a labor of love. You can't really stir it constantly for a full hour, or maybe you can, go for it. But you do want to stir it regularly, maybe every five minutes or so, just to stop it catching and burning, which will turn it super bitter and ruin it. And here we are about halfway through cooking, and you can see the color is already well on its way. And after one hour of painstaking stirring, we're there. This is gonna to be totally worth the effort. I'm gonna stir in some chicken stock today and do the usual stir as it heats. You can see it still thickens up thanks to the extra roux that we made and the flavor is frankly incredible. A bit of a special occasion one this, but it's definitely worth it. Oh my God. Here we are then folks, level five, and this American style breakfast gravy is incredible. Now I love some of this over savory biscuits, which are kind of like scones if you're in the UK, for a weekend breakfast. It's super easy to make, we just use the fat that's already in the pan. So I've just got some good quality pork sausage meat here, which I'll fry until nicely browned, breaking up with a spoon as I go. You can use regular sausages, by the way, you just pop them out of the skins first. Now once that's nice and brown, you can see we've got plenty of fat in the pan, and that will form the basis of our roux. 
Obviously, we can't really measure this this time, but this is level five, folks. You've got the eyeball for rhubarb by this point, I'm sure. This looks to me like it needs about a dessert spoon of flour, so in that goes, and then I'll just stir it in. Use the consistency as a guide if needed. You can always add a little more flour, but remember, it's pretty tricky to take it away. Although in an emergency, you can just add a little bit of oil or butter if you want, so it's fine. Let that cook for a couple minutes until the raw flour smell is gone and then add milk and or double cream if you're in the mood for a heart attack, which I won't lie, I usually am. Keep stirring on a gentle heat until thickened, like this. Taste it, season with salt and pepper and you're good to go. That is amazing, absolutely amazing. Do give it a go if you get a chance. So there you go folks, five levels of roux that every cook should know. Give them a go, practice makes perfect and don't forget, a good sauce hides all sorts of sins in the kitchen. Now you're a saucy master, go check out this video next for ways to put it to the test.